As we discover our tangled pasts and shared futures, we find ways to live together across borders. But those encounters change us. This is the music of Gregorio Martinez, <clears throat> Spanish guitar and song, African rhythm, sound of a desert washed by cool currents, stink of plankton. Skies are gray though it rains rarely in Afro Peru. Ballad fused with beat of cajon, jawbone of burro rattles from casings of spider egg, stomping of West African dance. Gregorio's music, the sound of a mixed race. Indians, Creoles, and Africans brought as slaves to the new world. Sambo, they called Gregorio, fiction writer and journalist, but outsider, even in a nation of mixed races. Zambo. And I set out to translate his work. It was a magical time in a seaport bar. Gregorio talked about returning a mi tierra. He say to the dusty town where he grew up in the valley of the Rio Lupi. Beer bottles filled our table while he told stories of the huaqueros, robbers of coastal tombs. And his tales opened the door wide enough for me to glimpse the magic of men who must sell cheap the precious objects they salvage from ancient graves, and yet retain something from them, a dig from the past, strength to live in a world where they have no place. And later, Gregorio would use that ancient power himself and bring the Waqueros spirit to America. Waqueros. The Waqueros rob desert tombs of pottery, textiles, and gold. Tombs where great civilizations laid their dead under temples that later crumbled into sand that Waqueros themselves were raised on. They unearth relics, then sell to middlemen for foreign buyers. Waqueros live beside mud walls like Gregorio's brothers and uncles, who raised pigs and farm dusty valleys where Gregorio tells them he will return, but Waqueros are independent like Gregorio, watchful, poised to move at any time, not farmers, the Waqueros work at night. So through long afternoons, Gregorio would wait with them, drinking, napping, collecting, stories he would sell to middlemen and then trek under moonlight to rubble walls near the ocean where they unearth treasures while Gregorio collects stories he can sell and tell to me.
so I'd listen for hours until he turned, eyebrows raised. He too. Que piensas, he'd ask, but eager I could tell to keep talking about the valley of the Lurine as if binding himself there with his words. They weren't strong enough to hold him, though. Because Gregorio followed romance to the U.S. instead, and almost ten years later, he turned up in my town, where our story began again, only this time. This time, Gregorio became the hero of the tale, only this time, I was there to provide the gold. Plums, magic like a Waqueros treasure. Plums that gave him a shaman's power in a Portland suburb. Gregorio spent most of his days in the basement of the split-level home his lover had received in from a husband she abandoned after a trip to Peru where she and Gregorio had met. And the dialect she'd learned from her mother passed down from Jews banished from Spain in the 15th century. That archaic Spanish was just like the language used by old folks in his town, a language from the grave brought them together, dialect of the Waqueros. And she had the heart of a pariah too, encouraged Gregorio to subvert America, become a brujo in Beaverton, because she also prospered by appearing to be who she was not only passing through. But she was burdened by a mother in a nursing home, so Gregorio stepped in and became El Brujo de Beaverton. Here's how it began. Plums from my tree. 
Midsummer plums just coming bright. They became magical. Objects doled out to the rhythm of a subversive tongue. Translucent, full of light plums like secrets passed between them. And slowly, she began eating again. To the staff, their conversation seemed incantation, not Spanish. And how could they have imagined that a wealthy Jewish lady would share a language with a Peruvian who was not a doctor at all, no different for them than the campesinos doing yard work. And because he succeeded, they did not guess he was a Peruvian who mined his people's past for tales to sell and tell. Finally, they did. And one night, Gregorio came home announcing, now they know why I'm not a doctor. But it didn't matter. They were suddenly leaving town and taking the old lady with them. The plums were exhausted. So I never saw Gregorio again. But I have a photo of us. Together, shoulder to shoulder, Gregorio hovering between Brujo, an uneasy visitor, and me, happy because we appear friends. A serious man of letters, his next novel, a chronicle of devils and musicians, was a surreal history about tricksters, a novel I could never finish because of words not found in dictionaries, long sentences twisting as roots of grave robbers so full of magical deeds that I was hopelessly lost. A confusion that revealed how fragile the bridge we'd built and how little he needed to cross it. Oh, I provided the plums, but his world was sufficient. The dusty coast of Peru, the myth of his people, source of his power. The stories he told me kept him anchored to vaqueros, jawbones, and rattles, guitars, and sad ballads of the desert coast. Grave robbers scatter bones and textiles that rot once exposed to sunlight and salt air like Gregorio's magic brief and compelling and quickly shifting sands. What's left is a golden tale to sell and a glimpse of the magic and beat of Capone. Ballad of guitar, rattle of jawbone, and casings of spider eggs, of tricksters, vaqueros, and storytellers who cast a spell that, for a moment, cloaks them with power.